For a good amount of time, shotguns dominated the range landscape. You had single target annihilation in the form of the legendary Tigris Prime. You had area of effect cleansing with the Arca Plasmor. And who can forget the pure carnage of the comb? That time, however, is long gone. And the only question I got, can this beautiful weapon measure up to the legends of the past? But perhaps that's a bit of a unfair task. Regardless, hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar. And today we're going to be diving deeper into this Mastery Rank 14 primary shotgun, the Astilla Prime. I'm going to have a cheap build, something that most Tenno should be able to build, but of course we're also going to be maxing things out with an endgame setup, with a Riven Prime mods, the works. And of course we're going to top it all off with a touch of Warframe buffs. And by a touch, I mean like a lot. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly approach. I'm gonna be taking my time and explaining whatever I feel is necessary for more newer Tenno. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Astilla Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. The Estella Prime is a ranged primary weapon, it's a shotgun my friend, but not just any shotgun, it's an automatic shotgun, don't you just love automatic shotguns? That said though, it does have a couple of usability quirks, first of all the recoil, kinda on the jumpy side, let's take the usual 15 meter test so you can see exactly how this one handles. Honestly, it does stabilize at full fire rate, but it still feels a little bit on the jumpy side. Nothing you can handle. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a shotgun. Yes, it was supposed to be used up close and personal, and you can use this one as a legitimate rifle, which is absolutely outstanding. This being Gara's signature weapon, it fires a glass slug. It's a projectile-based attack, and this projectile obviously has travel time, so leading your targets sometimes is definitely a thing. Upon contact, this projectile will be detonating in a 2.4, I repeat, 2.4 meter radius with a damage falloff of 30%. What is damage falloff? I <laughs> said, simple. You get all the damage in the center, right in the epicenter of the explosion. The more you head on outwards, you are going to be losing more and more damage, up to 30% at the edges of the explosion. And I do believe that's pretty much it for usability. You might be curious about the following fact. Alright, this being Gara's signature weapon, what is the bonus if you use it with Gara? Get ready for this one, my friends! <laughs> Gaining additional ammunition reserve. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> for real, you get something like 80 or 100 extra ammo reserve. I don't know about you guys, but I never had any ammo issues with this weapon, so there you go. Now, let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. But before we do that, we're gonna throw in a stat comparison between the regular Astilla and the Astilla Prime. Let's have a look, see? There you go. Accuracy on this one is gonna be the same. An extra 4% in critical chance, and I know what you're gonna say, dude, 4% is like, it's like nothing, right? It doesn't really matter, but it does really matter because it actually crosses a threshold for the Astilla. It's fully worth building crit on the weapon. My issue is that why did they leave the multiplier alone? They could have at least put it to 2.0, which is the norm for weapons such as this one, but unfortunately they didn't touch this one either. Neither did they touch the falloff, 30 to 60 meters, that's the falloff. So you want to maintain your range at the maximum of 30 meters. And again, this is a shotgun, yeah, which is again huge considering that you can use it as a rifle. Fire rate of 4.33 remains the same. Magazine received a 50% buff from 16 to 24, which does help out with usability and the overall feel of the Estella Prime. Noise alarming, the same reload as before. Status chance only 4% extra as well. Trigger the same auto. And when it comes to damage, again, this impact right here represents the slug making contact with a target, and this is the explosion. Now the slug got a buff to 33%, unfortunately we don't have those new fancy impact mods for shotguns, so you can't really make use out of the impact procs that you do get out of the Astilla Prime. Radial attack, again, same range, sadly, only 2.4 meters and same damage drop-off, I feel like the dev 
wasted a good opportunity to give us a small buff on this one. The damage has also been increased, it's got 20 extra damage and the percentages remain the same, so prop priority number one will be Slash and considering the weapon's status chance is not bad at all. If your weapon comes with only 30 out of 30 mod capacity, jump into actions and plug in that Auro King Catalyst and double that mod capacity. You can grind one from Nightwave, you can get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie, you can pay 20 plot to have one installed, and various events in Warframe also feature on Auro King Catalyst as a reward, including some invasion events things. Now my weapon has been Forma a total of 4 times, this is not a Forma heavy weapon, by default it comes with 2 V symbols or Madurai and 1 Dash or Naramon in the weapon Plexalus or Exilus slot which you should, I repeat, should unlock, it comes with a V symbol which is perfect because we're gonna be using here Fatal Acceleration. In the usability department, Fatal Acceleration helps you not have to lead your targets as much, it's easier to hit your targets when the projectile moves faster, but more importantly it also increases the fall off as well, so you can stand 40 something meters away from your target and still not get any, da get any damage drop off whatsoever. A more of a precise shotgun, even though that's kind of like an oxymoron. One thing that I did feel that I would have wanted on the Estella Prime is a mod that would reduce the recoil because it's bouncy, right? Again, it is stabilizing at full fire rate and all whatnot, but the only recoil mod you got is this one. Double Barrel Drift. The problem with this one is while sliding. So, yeah, there you go. And since we already talked about that, the only thing which I do want to point out is the Riven Disposition of only 1 out of 5. This is a brand new weapon, and brand new weapons sadly get the Riven Dispo of only 1 out of 5. Hey Dear D, if you are listening, how about 2? Oh, come on, just 2 out of 5, so the Rivens are actually worth getting without a God roll, Super Saiyan rolls, and all that good stuff. Speaking about good stuff, let's have a look at a standard build. Imported from France, Damage with point blank, multi shot with health chamber, critical chance, critical damage, blunderbuss, ravage, and of course the 260 60 mods forming viral damage because right now this is the ranged meta. Uh, poor as it may be. And of course, Hunter Munitions is here because it's a primary that has crit, so therefore not having Hunter Munitions would be blasphemous, you blasphemous wretch, you. That's it, my friends. This is not the end all be all. This is a suggestion for a cheap old build, but there are a couple of suggestions I'm going to be making. Again, they're entirely up to you. This is your option slot. Plug into this one or whatever you want. Uh, let me show you the motus in the setup. The motus in the setup. This is a fantastic mod. I love this mod. Check this mod out, man. A hundred percent crit chance and status chance for four seconds after landing from a double jump or a bullet jump. I love this mod. This is such a tremendous mod. Why did you have to gimp it, dear DE, with only 4 seconds? Or at least it would have been like miles better if you get the buff after you execute said double jump. You know, movement in Warframe is very agile, it's very fantastic. Yeah, yeah, something like this would have definitely been better after you execute the bullet jump. Or at least give us 6 seconds or something like that. Moto setup is a tremendous option on this shotgun. But perhaps you're more of a simple man. I'm a simple man, you're a simple man, maybe not. I'm a simple man. Status chance, shotgun savvy. Yeah, 90% status chance and you're done. This used to be such an underpowered garbo mod. It used to be 30%. Now, however, it is 90%. So 100% you can go for shotgun savvy. Take a look at that status chance. Take a look. Beautiful, man. Absolutely beautiful. But keep in mind, this one does give like a lot more. Just after the uh, double jump, uh, for four seconds. Another option which I do enjoy, adding one more 60-60 mod to the equation. Something like Scattering Inferno, you're running Viral Heat, Heat will deal with some of that armor, Viral will pump up the value of your slashes, it's a combination made in heaven, I tell you, or not. And the cheapest option is gonna go with Multishot and Vigilante Armaments. Believe it or not, this is always a solid choice, regardless of what you wanna test. So initially we're gonna go like so. One last change which I wanna make. Digital Extremes refuses to give us a blunderbuss. This was said to be because uh, that would make shotguns over... <laughs> No, that's what they said. It would make shotguns overpowered. Now, this was true maybe once upon a time before the melee meta, but we're gonna talk more about that in the conclusions portions of this guide. What I would say is forget about Blunderbuss and go with Laser Sight. Now, this one 
gives you 120% critical chance opposed to 90, but it does have a condition on activation. It's gotta be a headshot and it's gotta be while aiming. Nine seconds is more than comfy enough. Now, of course, you probably already spotted something that you can do. Why not go with both laser? Why not go with both? Ah, and right you are, my friend. You can go with blunderbuss and laser sight. More crit, more slashes out of hunter munitions, and we're gonna quickly test a couple of build variations right after I check that my Nidus doesn't have anything that can skew the test results. The famous 120 corrupted heavy goons, as per usual, my friends. Quickly go for headshots. Headshots, mama, I love my head. Look at that. Like, easy application. A lot of procs, baby. I love procs. You love... You gotta love procs in Warframe. Because if you don't like, love procs in Warframe, well, <laughs> you're not really gonna get a whole lot of damage. Melee relies on procs as well. Condition overload and all whatnot. Range relies on procs as well. Getting slash and all whatnot. There used to be a time... When we would just like overpower with raw damage. That time is gone. Do you miss that time? I don't know if I missed that time. I just thought I'd ask you guys. That is the performance with a normal, standard, everyday build. With cheap mods. There's nothing expensive here whatsoever. From my point of view, it's definitely respectable. But is it respectable for the latest and greatest prime weapon? Mm? You tell me, my friends. You tell me. Let's check out another build variation. You guys want more crit? I know what you guys want. You want to crit it, crit it. Why do we want crit and not status, dear digital extremes? Because pretty numbers on the screen. That's why. If you'd make pretty numbers from the status procs, maybe you would want that as well. Go for headshot, mama. All crits are now active. Of course, you're gonna get more slashes faster. Not that you need more slashes faster. Look at that. I mean, let's see how fast do I get those water procs. I got only two. Am I on 10? Am I on 10? I'm on 6! I get a lot more impact procs as well. Which is why that mod that transforms impact to slash would have been good on this one. But unfortunately, it's not available for shotguns. Why? Dear digital extremes. Why? <laughs> were you afraid we were gonna use it on something like the... Plasmore? Not that it would make it overpowered. God, no. Jesus, God, no. Of course not. Don't be silly. So that's with double crit, and the last variation which I do want to show you, fantastic gentlemen, is going to be with motor setup. Technically, this is the most powerful, all right? It's just uncomfortable to use. And oh, and the heat one as well. Really quickly, we're going to show this one. Again, after landing from said double jump, like that. You see that? You got a couple of seconds, so go to town upon your enemies. Beautiful beautiful you're probably not gonna notice a difference in actual gameplay which is more powerful you're gonna have to take my word for it motor setup is more powerful i just don't like playing with it because of the condition i would love if the condition is after a bullet jump because you know you do that like a whole lot more than landing from a bullet jump so there you go my friends that's kind of the performance of the astilla prime with normal mods What's the prime mods? Well, we don't have prime blunderbuss. What do we have prime for shotguns? Well, let's take a look see. Prime charge shell uh, doesn't really apply in the case of the Estela Sally. Prime point blank, definitely. Let's bump it up with prime point blank. And you can also go with prime bravage. While we may not have prime critical chance, we do have prime critical damage. And you also got prime chilling grass, which again, in this case, does not apply. One last time, I want to show you with the heat one as well. I promised myself I would show you this variation because it only takes a minute. 120, goons, 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 and then we're gonna bump it up, bump it up, bump it up. Look, look, look. Heat removes some of that nasty armor from the corrupted heavy goons, and this is an option as well. If you're heading down to Deimos, because that's the latest content, right? Get your Vulpophila on, get your standing on, get your tokens on, go hit on the Deimos Mama, or whatever else you want to do down on Deimos. Admire the infested landscape, because damn, it's hauntingly beautiful. Then in that case, forget about Viral. You're gonna need heat a lot more than Viral. Make corrosive, my friends, instead. Because the enemies on Deimos are immune to Viral. So bear that one in mind. That's enough for variations, right? Let's talk Riven mods. Let's talk Prime. We already talked Prime mods, didn't we? Yes. Let's talk Riven mods. I got this one. It's a loner from a friend. It's an amazing Riven. But unfortunately, the disposition lets it down heavily. You got critical chance. You got damage multi -shot. Beautiful. Beautiful. How can you... It's beautiful. That's it. We don't talk about this. This is beautiful. Point blank, which is prime, then of course prime bravage as well. It's not really worth going for Rivens for a Dispo 1 weapons. Don't get me wrong, you can still make a difference, but you're gonna need the exact roll. You're gonna need a uh, god roll, right? They're called god rolls. You're gonna need something that is very expensive to buy, or you gotta get really lucky to actually get 
So do bear that one in mind. If you love the Estilla Prime, by all intents and purposes, my friends, go at it, go ham at it, and get yourself a nice ribbon. Priority will still be damage multi shot, and actually crit chance as well, because if you're if you're gonna go for hunter munitions, if you're not going for hunter munitions, you can forget about it. And as you can see, it's plain to see from the AOE damage, from the collateral damage, that a ribbon still does make a difference. Minus 50% impact in this case, I'm still gonna proc impact 24-7, but what can you do? This is still one of the most precise shotguns in Warframe. What more do you want from a shotgun than this? From a gameplay perspective as well. And you know what? I'm super happy they released the Estella Prime, because the Estella was kind of like a sleeping gun. Nobody would be using it anymore, but look at it now. So beautiful. Absolutely glorious. One more thing that we can do, my friends, bump up everything with Warframe buffs. And for that, we're gonna be using the ever so lovely Lady Mirage Prime and her outstanding buffs. Uh, let's see, what kind of buffs laser? Well, obviously, Karose Projection against Grenier or against any heavily armored target. This will have a massive effect on it, even in, in, some, ca in some cases, Corpus units, because underneath their shield, they do have a bit of armor. Ferrite, alloy, depending on the case. When it comes to Arcanes, these are a lot more impactful than something like an Aura. So if your build calls for Energy Siphon or Physique or Power Donation, Growing Power, whatever you guys fancy, or perhaps you're a melee person because, you know, you can't be arsed, then Steel Charge. Arcanes Avenger, this is Prio 1, R5 from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. On damage, a 21% chance for plus 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. It's a bonus additive after applying to primary, secondary, and to your melee at the exact same time. It's one of the most powerful offensive arcanes in Warframe. As for a raw damage approach to your primary, if you're not going to use something like an armor, energize, or whatever else that makes your Warframe, you know, work, go with Arcane Rage. On headshot, a 15% chance for 180% damage to primary weapons for 24 seconds, which is absolutely huge, my friends. Absolutely huge. Now, let's test out this puppy on level 155. Corrupted heavy goons. I always find this 155 test or 140 test kind of pointless. Normally you don't really meet enemies that big, but perhaps you're a fan of doing something like endurance runs, so there you go. Activate Mirage's 4 ability, and then we're gonna go with her 3rd ability for a massive damage increase. Her 4, uh, her four ability right now is Empower. I replaced it using the helmet system for a little bit more clone action, a little bit more damage, all of that good stuff. And now just aim for die enemies and absolutely destroy them. The old, now you see them, now you don't. Beautiful. Absolutely bloody fantastic. But keep in mind, this is Mirage Prime we're talking about. She increases weapon damage by a truckload and a half. It's time to draw some conclusions regarding the Estella Prime. The Estella Prime... As it stands on its own, it's not a bad weapon. It's a very powerful weapon. It's a subjectively beautiful weapon. There's so much detail built into the Estella Prime. Let me show you what I mean. Look at the magazine. Look at that. Do you see the magazine? It has sculpted detail on both sides of the inner barrel. The part of the barrel you don't even see. You don't even see that except when you reload. You gotta crouch down and actually look. It has the bullets lined up nicely on one side. Let me show you. Of course, if you have clones, you can make more, right? So here we go, fire one, reload. Look at them, on the ground. Okay, that's the back side, that's the front side. So you see, they didn't cheap out on it. Okay, granted, it doesn't have 24 bullets. It doesn't, ha doesn't have 24 shields. I think it has something like uh, 10 or 12. But still, so much detail was put into this beautiful looking weapon. The problem is the power of the weapon, and not as it stands by itself, it's simply the meta that we're currently in. It's not advantageous to take ranged weapons on what is considered by some players and game content. For example, Eidolon hunting. For example, Steel Path. For example, staying in a mission until you meet level 1000 or 2000 enemies, something silly like that. This is not an ideal weapon for something like that, because melee will always be doing a better job in the current meta because of how scaling works currently in Warframe. Now, a while back, a couple of content creators, including myself, we pointed out that gunplay in Warframe is a bit underpowered, it's not very satisfying, and the developer did react to it, and they said they will be doing something about it, but until this point, they haven't really done anything about it. Another aspect which is worth pointing out, and this one is entirely subjective, personality of these prime weapons. 
Do you guys remember when Digital Extremes actually tried to do fun stuff, special stuff for guns? Remember the Piranha Prime? The Piranha Prime has its own little unique mechanic, its own little quirk. No, don't get me wrong, that ghost piranha that you can spawn is only really usable in lower level content and it's not gonna make the weapon overpowered or anything like that, but it does offer its own unique little something special. It does offer that bit of personality. By contrast, newer Prime weapons, even though they look absolutely amazing, balls to the walls amazing, they don't have that from a mechanical standpoint. The buff we receive for them, for the Volnus Prime, from the Astilla Prime, for more recent Prime weapons, are safe, small buffs, essentially phoning it in without actually trying to improve on the recipe. And that's just a little bit sad. This should not deter you from this awesome weapon. If you want my two cents on it, build it, farm it, love it, and enjoy the Astilla Prime. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, my friends, drop it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below if you guys want to suggest any particular type of content. Now, in all honesty, I can't exactly promise you that. You know, it will be done by next time or even within a week. But what I can promise you is that I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. Hey, D, please, that weapon rework, pretty please, with sugar lumps on top. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.